What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. You are going to absolutely fall over for this delicious no-bake Bailey's liqueur cheesecake. So if you want to learn how to make amazing Bailey's cheesecake, keep on watching. For today's recipe, you will need 85 grams of good quality Irish butter and 200 grams of blitzed or crushed up Oreos with the centers taken out. This is going to form our biscuit base. If you are going to use a food processor or a mixer option, just be sure not to pulp it so fine that it becomes a powder. We still want the biscuit to be nice and crumbly. So you can see there the texture is still quite grainy. We haven't gone too far with that blitzing and it is just right now to add the butter. Tip all of your crushed up Oreos into a mixing bowl and add your melted butter. This is going to form your cheesecake base. So we want to make sure that all of those Oreos are really nicely coated in the butter. And by the time you're happy, it should look something like wet, clumpy sand. That's the best way I can describe it. So I'm using a nine inch springform tin. And if you have used springform tins before, you know that there is a right way and a wrong way to put the base into the tin. This confused me for a really long time. But in order to make sure that your cheesecake comes out nice and easily, make sure that the lip of the base of your springform tin is facing downwards. Tip in our lovely buttery Oreos and start packing it down with your spatula. Make sure you work your mixture nice and evenly throughout the entirety of the base of your tin. It's now ready to be popped into the freezer while we get on with our next step. So for our delicious Bailey's cheesecake filling, we will need 400 grams of full fat cream cheese, 250 grams of mascarpone, 250 milliliters of whipping cream, also known as double cream, 200 grams of icing sugar, 200 grams of a good quality dark chocolate. You can use milk if you prefer, or even white chocolate. And four tablespoons of Baileys. Start off by adding all of your ingredients into the bowl. Your cream cheese, your mascarpone, your icing sugar, your Baileys, and melt your chocolate over a bain-marie or a double boiler. Even do it in the microwave, however is easiest for you. Let it cool down slightly for three to four minutes. Add that into the rest of your ingredients. The reason we let the chocolate cool down is to make sure that it doesn't melt any of our other ingredients. I'm making the cheesecake today with a hand blender, but you can absolutely do this with a wooden spoon or a strong spatula. I just find that using the hand mixer is a really nice way to incorporate air into the mixture so that it is really light and fluffy, exactly the way a no-bake cheesecake should be. Scrape the sides of your bowl down regularly to make sure that you're not missing any of those ingredients that could be stuck on the bottom. At this stage, we can grab our double cream and I am going to whisk this up by hand using my whisk. Because this is double cream, it really doesn't take that long to come together. So I find that using a hand mixer can sometimes mean that I take it that little bit too far and we almost end up with butter. So doing it by hand allows you to keep control of how whipped up your cream will get. Now that's just about right and that is ready to add to our lovely moussey mixture and you can see the color starts to change. It almost starts to lighten up exactly what we want to see. And believe it or not, it is that simple. That is the filling for our no-bake cheesecake. I find actually that the trickiest part of this recipe is to make sure that you spread the mixture nice and evenly over your biscuit base, which you will have removed from the freezer and it should be super cold if not already frozen. Spoon out all of that mixture, leave absolutely nothing in the bowl. We don't want any of this mixture wasted and start to smooth it out using an offset spatula. Really make sure that you work the mixture into all parts of the tin. I have made cheesecakes before where if you don't push down all of that mixture into all of the parts of the tin, you end up with air pockets and holes in your cheesecake, which is not what you want. It obviously doesn't affect the flavor, but if you are a stickler for visual, it's not something you're gonna want. There is no science to getting a really smooth top. It really just does take time and practice. It's never going to be absolutely perfect, nor does it have to be. And just for fun and a little bit of color, I'm going to take some gold flakes and just sprinkle them lightly over the top. Pop your cheesecake into the fridge to set overnight, at least 24 hours, or you can freeze this immediately. But just for some extra oomph and some extra flavor, we are going to make a really simple Bailey's frosting. For the frosting, you will need 50 grams of butter, 150 grams of icing sugar, one teaspoon of espresso powder, 
30 grams of cream cheese and one to two tablespoons of Baileys, depending on how strong you want this. As with any buttercream frosting, we're going to go ahead and whip up the butter until it's really nice, pale and fluffy. Save in our icing sugar and our espresso powder, making sure that there are no lumps left over and whisk again using our hand mixer. Add in your cream cheese and your Baileys. Beat your ingredients together until you form a really nice and smooth consistency. Because we've added cream cheese, this icing will be a lot lighter than some others that you may have made. So if you feel that your icing is not of a pipeable consistency, you can add small amounts of icing sugar until you get the desired result. Or alternatively, you could firm it up in the fridge for about an hour. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. You can see that the icing is still holding its shape after I've taken the mixer out of the bowl. I'm going to grab a glass and use it to help me fill my piping bag. I'm going to use a rose star tip just to pipe out some really cute ruffles along the outside of my cheesecake, which I have gently, ever so gently, removed from the tin. And for an even more luxurious feel, I'm going to add some Butler's Irish chocolates. And there you have it guys. I love to keep it simple on my channel. I really hope that this recipe is suitable for all levels and that you give it a go yourself at home, especially coming up to Christmas. This is a recipe that all the family are going to love. So make sure that you save yourself a slice because it is not going to last long. If you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button down below and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my videos. And I'm looking forward to seeing you back on my channel really soon. Bye.